Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to do another video on modern portfolio theory and coming up with appropriate weights for various cryptocurrencies. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We like to do a little, uh, things a little bit differently on the channel, so I hope you guys enjoy the content. So the last video we did on modern portfolio theory was coming up with appropriate weights for Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then we added on Litecoin at the end to show how it affected things or how it really didn't affect much of anything, and how Bitcoin and Ethereum, based on your risk-adjusted returns or maximizing your Sharpe ratio, actually comprise mostly of just Bitcoin and Ethereum, a, a majority of Bitcoin, uh, slightly less Ethereum. But then if you, want, if you wanted to increase your volatility at the expense of, or increase your expected return at the expense of more volatility, then you would have more Ethereum. Now, that video received a fairly decent reception. Had, there was a lot of good reception on that video, so I thought I'd expand it to six coins. Now we're looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Dash, and XRP. You might say, well, why did you choose these coins? Do you own these coins? I do not own a lot of these coins. And I would say that the reason I'm doing these coins is because they have the history for it. So on the, you know, I, I sometimes discuss newer coins. Uh, you guys know that the primary coins that I like are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Link, ADA, and DOT. Unfortunately, when you have such new coins to the market that have not been through one market cycle, the usefulness of such an exercise is not nearly as much. And we actually, I showed this exercise on the premium list. Uh, if you guys are interested. But anyways, this one we're looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Dash, and XRP. These are coins that have been around for several years and we have a lot of data. They've all been through at least one market cycle. So we have relatively useful data to look at what does maximize the Sharpe ratio of these six coins based on your expected or based on historical returns and historical volatility. Now, obviously you could argue that historical returns are not necessarily a great projection of future returns, but that's where the secret sauce can often be for say hedge funds and whatnot as to, as to, be whether, or as to what they think the expected returns could be. And then that is what they would base their portfolios on. So they would implement what they expect their, the future returns of these cryptocurrencies to be. So the way this works is every dot you see on this chart is in fact a portfolio with various weightings of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Dash, and XRP. And we might, you know, as we as we look at this chart, you should know that this curve right here is known as the efficient frontier. There, that means that for a given volatility, there exists a single portfolio which maximizes your risk adjusted returns or maximizes your Sharpe ratio. The, the data points here are color coded by their Sharpe ratio. OK, and the Sharpe ratio is essentially just your your returns minus your risk-free, minus the risk-free returns, divided by the standard deviation of the excess returns. And you can solve for this by doing a Monte Carlo brute force method, like running a million simulations, this one's 250,000. You can also use a little bit of quadratic programming to solve for the portfolio that maximizes your risk-adjusted returns at a given volatility. Now, regardless of the volatility, there is one portfolio, identically one portfolio that exists that maximizes your Sharpe ratio. And it happens on this chart to be this portfolio. It has to exist on the efficient frontier, and it more or less corresponds to a volatility of approximately 67% uh, or so. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with this type of chart, you might not understand what it fully means. What does it mean to have an expected return of one? Well, this means your expected annual return would be approximately 100%. That does not guarantee you 100% in one year. It means that your expected return is 100% plus or minus 70% if you're if you're looking at say this data point plus or minus 10, uh, 70% and this should be accurate to within one standard deviation which is 68%. So there's a 68% chance that your expected return is within 100 is 100% plus or minus 70%. So that would range from 30% up to 170% up to a 68% probability. Now the reason why this is important is because if you're picking out portfolios of these six coins, you don't want to pick out one that gives you a, a high volatility like 90%, but gives you an expected return of 65%. If you're going to chew off the volatility of 90%, you want the expected return of 110%. That's why for a given volatility, you want to pick out the portfolio on that efficient frontier. So maybe you say, well, maybe this maximizes my risk adjusted returns, but I would prefer to have slightly higher returns, maybe above 100%, maybe 
maybe 110%, and I'm willing to pay for it with more units of risk. So when people say rate my portfolio, you should simply say, well, what is your risk tolerance? What is your timeline? What are your goals? Because everyone's risk tolerance will be different and there's not a one size fits all solution. Now, if you look at the portfolio of these six coins, which maximize the sharp ratio on the efficient frontier, it actually corresponds to 51.6% Bitcoin, 29.6% Ethereum. So essentially you're looking at a portfolio that's made up of 80% Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then you come in with 0.7% XRP, 0.8% Litecoin, 12.6% Monero, and 4.6% Dash. So out of these six coins, if you wanted to maximize your Sharpe ratio based on historical returns and historical volatility, it would correspond to this portfolio. Now, if you said, you know what, I recognize that Bitcoin is likely to give me the safest returns, but what if I want more or what if I want to increase my expected returns at the expense of more units of risk? Well, what you can do you can go up this way on the volatility curve. So you essentially go up volatility and the expected return. So you go up this curve. So at say 75% volatility, you would maximize your risk adjusted returns here. And this portfolio would correspond to 28% Bitcoin and 41% Ethereum. So you can see that as you increase your risk, you're having less and less Bitcoin. And we can continue on and see that as you go through this, as you increase the volatility that you're okay with, you get less Bitcoin and generally more Ethereum as we go all the way up. So this goes from 51.6% Bitcoin down to 5% Bitcoin at 90% volatility. Um, and then starts at 29.6% Ethereum all the way up to 74% Ethereum at 90% volatility. So if you're okay, if you're okay taking on more units of risk, and you want a higher expected return, then having more Ethereum would likely give you that. But again, it's based on historical returns and historical returns is not always the best indication of what will happen in the future. However, this is a good place to start because a lot of people will say, you know, the majority of your portfolio should be in Bitcoin. And I agree with that. It's not financial advice. It's just what I've done with my, you know, I try, I try to keep to with my own portfolio. So if the majority of it should be, is there any math to back it up? And there is based on historical returns and historical volatility since 2015 anyways, because we have to keep them all on the same timeline. We can't take Bitcoin data from before 2015. They have to be the same length. The vector has to be the same length in the time series, like the array. So with that in mind, with that in mind, decreasing the amount of Bitcoin will, and, and say increasing the amount of Ethereum could increase your expected return. However, you are taking on more risk and therefore you're opening yourself up to the potential downside more than if you say had a majority of Bitcoin. So hopefully this video is useful. Let me know what you guys think about it in the description or in the comments below. What do you think about modern portfolio theory? Obviously, there's a lot of different ways we can explore this, but hopefully by looking at six coins that covers a little bit more ground uh, of some of the coins that you, that you guys may hold rather than just looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And I understand that some people might be frustrated because I'm not putting in your pet project into this analysis. But remember, if it launched in, say, late 2017, then there's not going to really be enough data to have a, a worthwhile um, or it's not going to be a worthwhile exercise necessarily to calculate out your risk adjusted returns. I did it with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Lincoln, ADA, and it really does depend on exactly how far back you go as to as to what the portfolio weight should be. But for Bitcoin, at least for Bitcoin and Ethereum, it tends to fluctuate between the same between the same numbers. You know, I've seen it go as low as 60 percent Bitcoin uh, for maximizing your your risk adjusted returns if it's just Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I've seen it go much higher up to 75 80 percent it all depends on kind of where you are in the cycle but if you guys like the content remember to subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up check out the telegram channel which you can find a link to in the description below and remember we also have the premium list which you can find a link to the sale in the description below as well if you're looking to lock in the lower rate you get access to the weekly reports the weekly premium videos the telegram alerts channel the trading view indicators the telegram chat room the risk dashboard and more make sure you guys check it out if you guys like the content Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.